was third. Um, finally, you know, it's scalability. Uh, with Bloom, we help customers pay as they grow. And this is very much akin to the Oracle Cloud. Um, now, Bloom, you know, from the early days, we're, we're the largest fuel cell provider out there. We kind of had to create an industry. And um, we've been fortunate in that we picked early uh, the Oracle ERP, EPM, Oracle supply chain, and it's helped us helped us grow and scale our business. And you know, uh, I want to thank Oracle; they've been a great partner. No, well, thank you. Well, you brought it up a little bit, so about Oracle. But can you tell us a little bit about how the Oracle Cloud plays a role and, and how Bloom innovates? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sure we're like many folks out there. Uh, prior to the Oracle Cloud, we had you know, a bunch of systems, they operated, you know, some on premise, some at a colo, some in the cloud, they didn't talk to each other very well. Um, imported a lot of data, we did it in spreadsheets, uh, took time, often the quality wasn't there. Uh, you know, moving to the, the Oracle SaaS and PaaS platform has really helped us solve those problems. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're getting much more timely data, it's much more accurate. Bloom is clearly growing at a pretty fast rate, and again, Oracle has, uh, has helped us uh, helped us keep up with that growth with quality information on time. So again, thank you. Great, great. Listen, please uh, give Randy a hand. Thank you. Local company, local company, where, where are you based? Down in that Silicon Valley area that you pointed out, but we're in Sunnyvale, California. And one of the great stories, really, uh, growth stories uh, in the country. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. All thank, best. You. thank you. Okay, let's uh, go to uh, another uh, customer video that we'll uh, roll. Lyft's mission is to improve people's lives with the world's best transportation. So I'd say we're a transportation company that is powered by amazing technology and amazing hospitality. Over the last five years, we've gone from having 30 employees at the company to now over 2,000. And we couldn't have done that without great systems. And so Oracle has been that for us. It's allowed us to integrate with multiple different products as we've gone through different levels of scale and allowed us to focus on what we do best, providing transportation by taking care of our drivers and passengers. Lyft is a proud partner of Oracle and we're excited for this conference to do a program called Ride for a Reason. And what this means is that whenever you take a ride uh, to the conference, we'll be donating 5% of that ride amount to the Red Cross to help with recent hurricane victims. Thanks, that was one of the co-founders of Lyft. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. And I'm now um, joined on stage by Paul Chapman, who's the CIO of GAP, um, if it's okay. I, I, know, I know what you want to do, okay. I'd like to stand up and do a shameless plug for my company. Uh, first of all, I'm wearing a Banana Republic blazer. <laughs> Banana Republic dress shirt, Gap denim, and Old Navy socks. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, that was very impressive, Paul. Thank you. I, I would, um, Trying to think if I got anything I'm wearing at Gap. Okay, so <laughs> this is great to have Paul here. Um, okay, so let's talk about Gap. One of the largest specialty companies uh, in the world. You're big, you've got scale, uh, a lot of stores, a lot of brands. How do you use that scale to your to your advantage? I'm glad that you're asking because when you look at the size of Gap Inc., we are 3,300 company operated stores around the world, 400 franchise stores, 90 countries, multi billion dollar digital business. Um, it's amazing the, the scale that we have as a company. What that also means is that um, we can design, oversee the, uh, the sourcing, logistics. Uh, and final uh, last mile delivery of our product to our customers unlike almost any other uh, apparel retailer around the world and we can use that to our advantage. I mean a good example is in the, uh, the whole apparel space. Here we have Athleta, um, also uh, Gap, right. 
and uh, Old Navy, all three brands are in the uh, athletic, athleisure business, and our ability to share information across all of our given brands, uh, that institutional knowledge has become absolutely critical for our success. And what we're able to do, as I was just describing in terms of just a, um, the athletic market alone, is various price points and designs based upon our given brands. Yeah. So we're using that as our strategic weapon. Yeah. I gotta tell you, Mark, our global supply chain organization is one of the finest in the world, and what they're doing in terms of constant evolution uh, when it comes to supply chain, and in particular now logistics, is just like none other. Couldn't be prouder of our uh, supply chain yeah. team. Yeah. Scale's a tricky thing, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, when you ever ask a question like that, uh, turning scale into leverage, as you're describing, as opposed to bureaucracy and mm -hmm. uh, challenge, and it's all of our jobs as leaders to get scale to come to your advantage, so uh, it's a great uh, story. All right, so let's talk about what you do to, I mean, obviously the customer experience is changing, millennials coming into the workforce, uh, into the buying public in a bigger way than ever before. How are you constantly redefining the buyer experience? Well, for Gap Bank, it's twofold. You've got to remember that a huge, huge percentage of our business is still store-based business. And for us to leverage uh, our capabilities within the stores is absolutely critical. Now, in every one of our brands today, uh, we have mobile checkout. And we use our mobile devices to engage with our customers in very, very different ways than uh, in the last uh, 50 years when you were looking at just more uh, uh, store-based uh, you know, uh, concepts. Uh, in particular now it's around clientele and what we can do to better engage our customers in our high-end stores uh, using those same mobile devices for everything uh, in terms of just engagement of customers uh, including such things as uh, multi-tender loyalty as well. Right, right. All right, so let's talk about something like uh, Stitch Fix, Trunk Club, some of these other shopping services. Is, is that a threat to DAP and how do you deal with that? Actually, when you talk about Stitch Fix, Trunk Club, a whole number of other business models. It continues to reinforce the fact that any retailer um, has to pay constant attention to the overall customer experience. How to delight customers. How to engage with customers in whole different ways than before. Um, Gap Inc. is no different than those two, um, or those two great companies. Um, primarily around how um, we're able uh, to innovate. I mean, a good example uh, would be our ship from store, where uh, we have figured out how to expose our store inventory to our online customers yeah. and make sure that uh, we are pretty much uh, always in stock. Another brilliant... That's interesting. Though. You're taking your point of presence. Instead of being a disadvantage, you're turning it into a competitive advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another huge opportunity for us from an innovation standpoint, because we're multi-brand, is our ability to have a universal cart, uh, what we call a universality. And in fact, uh, there's a screenshot that shows what it's like now in our e-commerce world for our four major brands, where uh, you can shop across those four major brands and you have one checkout experience. Uh, this, this is our strategic weapon, um, uh, unlike uh, what a lot of other uh, apparel retailers have. So it's almost like a mini mall. It is. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and it's something that we can continue to exploit in the years ahead. Uh, the other one, um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be about technology, it's about how you would want to engage in different ways. Uh, so when we look at Athleta from a business model standpoint, they have yoga classes uh, right there in their stores. And in fact, I think there's a photo, there it is of a, a typical yoga class within our stores. What a great way to uh, engage our customers. Yeah. But my point here more than anything else is that it's all about the customer experience and how we need to focus our attention on designing, developing, delivering amazing uh, product to our customers and at the same time uh, a, st a store and digital experience like none other. You were talking a little bit earlier about patchy. Wouldn't it be nice in the, the coming years that when Gap Inc. talks about patching, it's strictly patches on sport coats yes. or on denim, as opposed to all of the, the technology work that we've got to do. Right. Uh, we've got to get ourselves out of that business. We'll get there. 
you know, we'll get there. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some change, but we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Oracle, Oracle Cloud, and Gap. How does that play into your strategy? Well, first of all, I think you're aware of it, that both Gap Inc. and Oracle have been partnering for the last uh, 18, 24 months in bringing the Oracle retail applications into the cloud. And in fact, I got to tell you, Mark, I, the, the partnership between our two companies, the collaboration, uh, the R&D that has taken place, uh, I have this great team led by Connie Santilli, you have your Minneapolis-based retail team, and I have never seen uh, such a thought leadership, a collective wisdom, and the drive to accomplish what we've accomplished this year, and that is the uh, delivery of Oracle Retail to the Cloud. And in fact, our Intermix brand is the very first brand, of, uh, in fact, the very first retailer uh, for, from an Oracle standpoint to be up and running in the uh, Oracle Retail Cloud. A huge, huge victory for both Oracle and for Gap Inc. Right, right. No, it's great. Uh, how do you see the economics? So, Paul, when you think about cloud and IT and the economics of it, how do you see it playing a, a role, a bigger role, uh, if, you, if you think so, inside Gap? Well, and in fact, a little bit earlier when you were talking about the fact that budgets are being cut, uh, at the Is same time, going up and down. Uh, no, okay. not at all. And in fact, uh, on the operating side, I am committed uh, not only to keeping our costs uh, neutral, but actually bringing them down over the, the coming years. And of course, there's the uh, ever increasing demand for technology. So all the more reason uh, I've got to make sure that I can minimize costs over time, and at the same time, take uh, those savings and plow it into uh, investments uh, for our, our customers. Well, now let's let's talk a little bit about the I mean, you and I have known each other a long time. I'm sure that's not uh, a surprise to people in the crowd. Uh, but how do, you, how do you think of the overall relationship between Gap and Oracle? I mean, listen, we do a lot together. I'll do this as a bit of a pretty pretty good sort of. I mean, we do applications, technology. I mean, we, we're both big companies. Um, both have lots of things we want to get done. How do you think of it from your point of view about the relationship with Oracle? I will um, admittedly say that uh, back a few years ago, it was not in a healthy state. Uh, very uh, transaction-based, um, very decentralized. Uh, first of all, thanks to you, because I remember our conversation from uh, about uh, three years ago when I had asked that we have some dedicated account leadership, and you took me up on that and gave me uh, Sabrina and Dara amazing, amazing leader. And besides just Sabrina and all of the other leaders uh, supporting her, uh, it has, you know, over the, uh, the last uh, 24 months in particular, everything has fundamentally changed. It's now a strategic relationship. It is about a partnership. It is about both sides listening to, to each other about what the needs are. And it's not perfect, Mark, and you know it, it is. Um, but uh, it's about now uh, an open dialogue, the open communication um, that has really led to a, a stellar relationship we have between our two companies. That's great. Any closing thoughts, any closing comments you want to make? I would say the only thing... Any other yeah. demos you want to give? Or <laughs> any other, uh... No, but i got to tell everybody a funny story. Please. <clears throat> um, Mark and his leadership came over to Gapping headquarters last week. And it was it was a great opportunity. And by the way, thank you again for uh, coming on. I was late to actually getting there, but yeah. mm -hmm. but there was something that really caught my attention, and I forgot to mention it to you. Mark came into Gapping's headquarters right here in San Francisco without a tie on. It's the first time I think I've ever seen you, you know, without a tie. You know, you know what? Not only is it true, but I had customers because when I have customers, and particularly. I shouldn't probably give this away, but particularly if they're from the East Coast, where I, I always wear cup tie, and I had customers coming in, so I literally did that, and I went to those meetings without a cup tie, and I, I well, thank you. It's because of Gap. You, you, you fit right in last week. Do you know, I got to tell this, I was in San Francisco. Do you know why I was late? I come in to pull onto the street, Folsom, which Gap is on, and there was uh, yellow tape across the street. So I couldn't actually pull in the gap, and I was just on time. And there was a couple of policemen there, and I tried to negotiate with the police that I could just, I can see gap, let me in there.
and they're like, now. And, and the policeman kept negotiating with me, so I thought I had a shot to win, because he kept talking to me. But I couldn't get in, I wasted too much time, and this wasn't really a great story to get into, but it's why I was like, <laughs> so I, 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 uh, I apologize for that. But Paul, thank you so much. Thank Please you. give Paul a great day. We'll, we'll close up. I could, we, tripped, we covered a lot of ground, and, and we did it uh, roughly on time. So um, first, I thank everybody, but let me leave you these messages. The, the reason I went through this was companies are moving quickly, um, and, and we're in a position now with a full portfolio to help, and, uh, and I think with the montage of everything we've released, we're in the best position we've ever been in, and, we're awful excited. So all the best. You have a great rest of Oracle Open World. Okay?